Hey there, this is very exciting. A year ago, literally a whole year ago, I did an episode where I said, hey guys, a lot of you are complaining about ugly R6 files and we're gonna find a solution. But then a few things happened, like I had a baby, Ty had a baby, well, his, his wife Ashley had a baby, and then my sister had a baby who's the CEO of our company, and then our other team member had a baby, and now currently another team member's having a baby. It's just a lot of babies, and we totally dropped the ball, and we apologize. But good news, we have found the solution. We think. We hope. We hope this is the solution because what I've been doing is that I've taken multiple different collections of raw files from my students throughout this year, and I've just been kind of trial and error testing out what they see versus what I see. My computer, for some reason, has always shown images with a little bit more natural pop. The raw files from an R6, they come into Lightroom for me, and they just look like a normal file from my Mark III or my Mark IV. It just looks like it's got some natural pop, but for a lot of people, they complain that their R6 images were being imported into Lightroom, and they're completely flat, lifeless, dull. Gray is a term that a lot of uh, a lot of people are using. We didn't know why this was until now. Now we have some answers to why certain Lightrooms are showing images with a little bit more life straight out of the R6, and why some of them look completely dead and lifeless. I'm gonna show you what we're talking about, and hopefully this will be a solution for you if you are struggling to love your R6 because you hate how dull and lifeless Plus your images look. All right, so first we're gonna dive into what I would consider the solution, which is gonna be very easy. And you might think, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is it. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you uh, a raw file from one of my students. So this is from an R6, and I'm gonna to go to the develop module. You can see there's a lot of like pop and contrast. Uh, it's a little underexposed, right? There's some, definitely some editing that could happen, but it's a decent image. Uh, and you'll notice right here, it says camera standard. Now I want to show you if I was editing this, what I would do. I would come here and I'd go Adobe Standard, which makes it lifeless and flat, and it takes away some of that heaviness. People who were showing me like, look how dead and lifeless my R6 file looks, it was because they were starting at a place that they weren't used to. They're used to importing their photos and it looking more like the back of their camera. So when they're shooting, they're looking at their images and they're like, oh, these are great. And then they import them into Lightroom and they're like, oh, what happened? I hate my R6. So here's a solution. In Lightroom, go to Preferences and you're going to go to Presets, Raw Defaults, and then right here where it says global, you'll see and you'll notice that mine is set to camera settings. But I think what's happening to a lot of people is that theirs is set to an Adobe default. And if their Adobe default is set, then that means that when they're importing their raw files, the profile that they automatically see is going to be Adobe Standard. And Adobe Standard is pretty lifeless. I'm gonna show you what that would look like, let's say, on this image. This is not my image, it's another student's image. Uh, when you import it and it's on camera standard, but look at the difference for Adobe standard. Everything gets a little flatter, a little grayer, the vibrancies of, of the colors are just stripped away. And so if that's happening to people, I can understand why there'd be a lot of frustration because you're not really getting the vibrancy and the colors and like the pop that you saw on the back of your camera. And so what do we need to do? Well, we gotta make sure that when we're in preferences that we are selecting to be able to start with camera settings. And that's literally all you have to do. And so if that's gonna be your new normal, then what you can then what you can expect is to have more pop, more color, and a greater starting place. Now, here's the tricky part. Um, I don't prefer this. What everyone else prefers, that you wanna be a little closer to like the final product, it makes you feel like, oh man, I can see the potential. But to me, I don't prefer this because like when you look at this image, this is going to, okay, that's camera standard. When I go to a, um, Adobe standard, I feel like I'm in complete control. When you go back to um, camera standard, I feel like I have a lot of work to do and I'm already battling, I'm looking at the image thinking I already have to deal with the oranges. So what I wanna do is I'm actually going to edit this image. I'm gonna edit one in Adobe standard, which is the flat option. And then I'm going to edit camera standard, and I'm going to just do a manual edit. I'm not going to use a preset process, and the reason for that is because I wanna make sure I don't do anything. There are profiles built in to the KJ preset process, which are my favorite part, but for the sake of testing out our situation here, I'm gonna start by not changing the profile. I'm just gonna leave one camera standard and one Adobe standard. A few moments later. Okay, so this is gonna be camera standard. It's not my favorite. 
Um, and this is going to be Adobe Standard. Uh, Adobe Standard is slightly brighter. Now, is that because it's Adobe Standard or is that because the way that I viewed it through Adobe Standard, I got closer to the brightness that I wanted? That's probably more likely. Um, and then this one is a little heavier, a little, um, there's just something about it that I just don't love. Really, it comes back to mom's um, face and the contrast. I think her skin tone, everything looks a little bit more natural here. There are, there's more yellow undertones here um, and more kind of magenta undertones with the um, camera standards. Back in Lightroom, we're gonna look at the setting differences between these two images. So camera standard, we're looking at uh, the exposure, everything in the basic um, tab is like 90, negative 58, plus 60. So 90, negative 58, plus 60. And then we're gonna look over here and it was 80 plus 16 contrast, lowered the highlights, bumped up the shadows, um, and the blacks were plus 60. This is interesting because what I'm noticing is that there's more for me to do with this first edit that started at a place that was pretty dull. I actually think this is could be revolutionary for you because what I think you're seeing is that you want the preset to look closer to what you think is gonna look good, but what it's doing is that I think it's confusing a lot of people. So like I look at me starting with like the gray, flat, dull, black uh, R6 image, but because I know what I want in Lightroom, it's actually a better scenario because I'm using more of the basic tab here because I'm starting from scratch. So I'm doing it all myself. But if you start with the camera standard option, then a lot of the contrast is already built in and you're just manipulating what's already been given to you, but that might not be what you ultimately want. So let's keep looking at the rest of them. So this is the image that I prefer, Adobe Standard. Um, we're gonna go down to Tonal Curve. So Tonal Curve for Adobe Standard Edit is like negative 24, plus 25, plus 12, minus 30. And over here, it's negative 24 plus 12 plus 13, negative one. So it's just a little less dramatic. The backward C is less dramatic, which means the changes applied from the tonal curve perspective are less dramatic. So again, the pattern is that you're doing, I'm, I did less editing with camera standard because a lot had already been done, but it wasn't necessarily what I would prefer, which led me to a final edit that I didn't love. And then the first edit, I did more tweaks, but it's the final image that I prefer. So if you, this is, I think people are gonna watch this and walk away being like, huh, <laughs> Caitlin, help me find my solution, but I don't think the solution is what I ultimately want. If you are, desperate to have images that look like they have more pop and contrast like the back of your camera, then you may actually be creating a crutch for yourself. You're wanting the profile to do some of the heavy lifting. It might not be doing the heavy lifting in a way that's actually helpful to you. What I'm saying is that if you start at a more basic plain Jane profile situation, and you know how to use Lightroom. Now this is the problem. I think a lot of people don't know how to use Lightroom. So they see a flat image and they're like, oh, I can't save this. And you start tweaking a little bit and then it doesn't get better. And then you tweak a little bit more and you don't know how to get the look you want. And this is a foundational editing issue. The greatest thing that I can say to you is that you need the KJ Consistency course. And I'm not saying that because obviously it's a course that I sell. I'm saying that because if you're struggling, this is showing me why you're struggling. You're struggling because you don't ultimately know what you want and you're getting these preset profile configurations and then you're tweaking from there and you're miserable. But you don't wanna use a gray, lifeless, lack of vibrancy uh, profile because it seems like you're starting from ground zero and that scares you because you don't know, it seems too far from what you ultimately want. So this is something that I think we should address before we end this episode. If you're coming from something like the Mark III to the R6, the Mark III is known for having a more magenta undertone and having more natural con contrast in the raw file. When you see a flat R6 image, it's tempting to think, oh, this is awful, I hate this. But truthfully, what a flat image like that is showing you is that it actually has more dynamic range, which means the possibility of what you can do with that image and the data that was captured in the makeup of that file 
is you can do so much more with that file than you ever could do with a Mark III, but you're not used to starting from ground zero. You're used to starting with a little bit of pop and it's like, oh, I know exactly what to do with this. And so my encouragement is you can learn how to do exactly what you need to do with the R6 as well. And my approach is to start from ground zero because I truly understand Lightroom. Some people don't understand Lightroom. And so the more, the more that you try to find your way and the more that you push these sliders, the more you start to feel like it's all falling apart. But the truth is, is that you've never had to push your sliders as much as you did before because the file that you were using, whether it's a Mark IV or um, a Mark III, um, they had more built-in contrast than these flat R6 RAW files. So when people are trying to edit these flat R6 RAW files, it's gonna demand that you do some more drastic things with your sliders to get that pop. It's possible to make them look amazing, but you've gotta push these sliders harder than you ever have, and so it feels unnatural, and, and it doesn't feel like you're doing the right thing. And the first time you do a slider that starts to look weird, you start to freak out a little bit because this is not your normal approach. And I totally understand why this can be overwhelming and frustrating. I understand, and I want you to know, there's no right or wrong. All I'm trying to do is paint a picture to explain to you why you could be frustrated, why you could be feeling like, I just, I don't know how to edit anymore. I don't know how to make these files look like my work. This is a lot of technical editing stuff, but I think what's encouraging is that for some people who don't understand, and for, for me, I couldn't tell you why my images from R6 were popping up and they got a lot of natural contrast to them. And I would, I would get rid of that natural contrast and then edit from ground zero. Some people weren't experiencing that and I didn't know what to tell them and now I do. Okay, so if you watch this and you're just like, oh my gosh, wow, I, first of all, I don't know how to edit from ground zero. Like that looks scary to me. I don't wanna start from scratch, but I also get really frustrated with editing from the um, camera standard model. So like, what do I do? You just need to understand what Lightroom has to offer you. And that is the foundational piece of mastering the editing process and having a consistent Instagram feed, having work that flows together and looks like the same photographer shot everything, that's when the big bucks start rolling in. When you can have a portfolio that looks consistent, no matter if you're shooting in the mountains or the beach, warm light or cool light, dusk or dawn, like everything can be consistent if you understand Lightroom. And if you don't, I have a free class. You don't need to buy a course right now, but this free class will give you a huge head start. It's free, it's about an hour. You will learn how to manage your consistency and your skin tones. Love for you to dive in. There is a link to that below. I'm sorry this took a year. I'm sorry we were so behind. Um, you can blame my one-year-old, you know, he was, it, we, we had a rough transition to four kids. So anyway, I, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>